Welcome back to the Physique Overhaul Podcast. My name is Derek Morris, CEO of Morris Muscle Fitness, and this week I'm talking about criticism versus feedback. Okay, guys, so big discussion. Uh, well, it wasn't a big discussion, but I saw a post on it, and I kind of was like, you know what, that's a good good topic. Like someone kind of mentioned it in the middle of, of, a, of a discussion um, on a post, and I was like, you know what, that's a good good topic to bring up because – there's a lot of different factors to um, those two terms, right? A lot of people can get lost in translation between the two. So I want to break down kind of the two different terms and how it affects you as the goal-driven person you are, hopefully, and how it is also affected or how it is also delivered by the coach, maybe on the coaching end, right? So... If you're a client or an individual who wants to get results, I mean, there's always going to be those versions of criticism out there, right? You're going to have people that are that are just derogatory. They're criticizing from a negative place. They hate themselves, so they're just going to criticize everybody else. Like, that's a whole different situation. And a lot of times people, because society is so backed up with that side of things. There's so many people that will just outright criticize everyone around them. Uh, When it comes to getting into a situation where you actually want to progress, it can sometimes be taken in a really negative light or you get defensive or your back's against the wall. Someone is actually saying, you know, maybe what you're doing isn't, you know, the best for you, right? And all of a sudden you're like, well, it's worked from now. It, It worked over the last one or two years. So, you know, here's my results, right? But maybe that person was just trying to help. Maybe that person was just saying, hey, what got you from step one to three may not get you from step three to six, right? And so understanding that there's different levels and different types of criticism that can come your way and how you handle that criticism is going to be a confession of your character, right? Whether you're a confident person, whether you're a very defensive, emotional person, um, these are all going to factor in on how you accept criticism and what you do with it from there. And this kind of leads into where we talk about um, where we talk about feedback. With feedback, right? Criticism is, is, is essentially to me is I'll break it down how I would handle it with a client, right? So if a client has an issue going on, I'm going to break down what's going on. So where's the failure here? Where is the breakdown? Where is the the issue that is causing us not to progress. Okay, so let's say that the issue is we're not hitting our protein goals, right? So I'm not going to sit there. Like the first initial thing is, is, hey, I've been noticing that over the last like three or four weeks, we can see the chart, we can see the the trends here, if it's your nutrition logging, that the protein levels seem to be a little bit low, right? And for our goal, let's say that person wants to gain a significant amount of muscle tissue or lose fat or whatever. It really doesn't matter. Um, They need to get their protein levels up, right? So I say to them, hey, your protein is low. We've been missing over the last few weeks. And I think it's time to like have an actual talk about it because it seems it's going to be a big driving factor in getting your results, right? So that would be a way that I would critique that client, okay? I wouldn't just say, hey, why the fuck aren't you getting your protein? right? That's different. (laughs) That's a different approach, right? Um, So we have to understand, yes, there's good and bad types of criticism, but I also want to break down what criticism is. Criticism is essentially identifying the issue at hand. Okay, let's identify the problem. The feedback is going to be the solution, right? The feedback is going to be where we start to develop our action plan going forward, right? So I, criticism essentially, guys, is going to be, hey, your protein levels are low. I've noticed it over the last few weeks. It is definitely going to be hindering your recover, your, your, your recovery ability. We need to develop or find out why. Why is this so hard for us to hit? Let's look at your, your nutrition logs. Let's see where we can make changes. What would make it easier to get your protein in. Are we prepping? Are we not prepping? Are we doing quick, quick grab foods all day long? And so it's, you don't have any time to cook, you know? And uh, so those are all like critiquing and then diving in. The feedback 
is going to be, all right, we've addressed the issue. Here's what we're going to do going forward. I think that for you, maybe you need to start planning your meal prepping on a Sunday, prep for at least three or four days of food worth for those hard meals to hit midday or whenever. And then now you'll be able to start hitting your protein goals because that seems to be the hole in your nutrition that is, you know, an an opportunity to improve on, right? That's the difference between criticism and feedback. Okay, guys, there's two different things. And this is something that people kind of get lost in translation. They're not, they just think that they're being attacked or they think that the check-in with their coach is just all about the coach just tearing them down or finding issues with them, right, and all this kind of stuff. It's really not. From a coaching perspective, because I've coached so many people, right, I can say with certainty, guys, any good coach, the reason that they are finding things to critique you on and then also ideally finding things to give you feedback and solutions for is because they believe you're worth more, right? They believe that you have a lot more in you to give and they probably also believe that you're at a place where you're ready for it. You know, I'm not going to give certain feedback to a client or critique a certain client if they're not ready for it. You know, some clients will tell, will ask me, hey, what about this? What about that? Do I need supplements? Do I need this, 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 and this? Well, I'm not even going to look at that client's, um, you know, uh, option for supplements because I already know that they're not even at that point, right? And if you're, they're not at that point, there's no point in even adding supplements if they're not mastering the basics yet, right? So I wouldn't even critique that area. I wouldn't even go there. And so from there, basically, that's how I think that most people, they just never have thought about the breakdown in terms of, you know, criticism versus feedback, right? With feedback, that's where you have all that opportunity. You have a lot of opportunity to on the coaching side to obviously teach that client to get them progressing and on the client side you have a lot of options there for taking in information and learning instead of backing yourself against the wall and being really defensive of an old broken process that wasn't working necessarily anymore embrace the feedback as the next steps forward but remember Feedback without any implementation is just noise. If you're not willing to actually take action on the information given, you will never get results, right? So that's where I think, that's why I wanted to bring up this topic because a lot of people just go into you know check-ins with their coaches or mentors or whoever and kind of just think it's for the coach, right? They fill out the form there's like one or two one or two words for each question asked. Meanwhile, like there's a whole paragraph that you can write, you know, you can actually explain it. Like how much sleep did you get on a scale of one to 10? How, how many hours of sleep uh, did you get this week? And the person just writes two and they missed the part on the check-in where it said, if you get anything under, like on my check-in, it says, if you got anything under, uh, I think it's six or seven hours, please explain what happened, right? And how can we improve going forward? So there's right there in the check-in, it's acknowledging, okay, it's asking a question. It's then critiquing it by saying how many hours did you actually get, knowing our goal is around seven or eight hours. And if you got below six or seven hours, what are we going to do going forward for the next week? What is your action plan going forward? There's no point in just checking in and just telling your coach, yep, my stress is high, I get no sleep, blah, 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 blah. And it's just like one-liner answers. What is the coach supposed to do with that, right? You need to be more engaging, right? You need to be more engaging in the process. And the clients, I can tell you without, without a shadow of a doubt, the clients that engage in the process or in the check-ins where they're saying, hey, I had really shitty sleep this week, but... I'm pretty sure it's just because of X or because of this, right? Or because of that. That now gives the coach an opportunity to be able to help you, right? Maybe it's an issue where 
you know, they're like, oh, I'm getting bad sleep because I'm waking up in the middle of the night and I'm hungry. Well, that's, that's more information now for the coach to be able to go, oh, you're hungry in the middle of the night. Okay, let's take a look at our diet. Let's take a look at when you're, when you're working out. Let's take a look at what your nutrition looks like um, later on in the, in the day, right? Let's see what, what are you eating before bed, all that kind of stuff. But if, if that client hadn't actually mentioned that they're waking up in the middle of the night because of being hungry and instead just said, I get shit sleep, right? So part of the criticism and part of the feedback process is you – providing the information to your mentor or to your coach so that they have enough material and information and data to actually make informed decisions to get you progressing forward. Like make, make no mistake guys, the, the clients that I have that are engaging, they write, they explain their answers in the check-ins. They are all the, they are the clients that I spend the most time with. Right? They are the clients that I spend time with and really dig in and dive into their lifestyle habits and what's happening and they're the ones that learn the most too because I can actually have um, – they give me basically the ammo for me to be, to be able to go in there and address concerns with my actual background and knowledge and, and schooling and all that kind of stuff, right? Or if it's something I am not sure of right about, I can even look it up for them, right? I can look up – more advanced information if need be. None of that is possible. None of that critique and feedback is possible if the person just says, meh, I'm just tired all the time. That's you gotta you guys gotta dig deeper, right? And so I, guys, we just want the best for you. I want the best for you. I want you to get the best results. I'm gonna leave it at that for this podcast episode. The, the key to your success is going to be for you to open up, accept the criticism, accept the feedback, but then also take action on it, okay? So until next episode, guys, crush your lifts, eat your protein, and we'll talk later. Cheers. Also, guys, thanks for listening to the podcast episode. You can also find me on Instagram, uh, Morris underscore muscle, and Facebook, Derek, just under my name, Derek Morris. I hope you have a great week ahead. Cheers.